Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play The Occult Chronicles. Craig Holden is wrapping up things on the second floor. Looks like he's explored the vast majority of it now. There's a few encounters up here that we probably won't be seeing to completion, but otherwise, he also has been running around, turning in quests for all sorts of different people. We picked up, I think, both of these challenges last time. I still don't think I actually looked at what they do. So if you're curious, you can take a look over there on the left for Reckless Charge. And this one is the Blade Dances. We also have just gotten the Black Heart after we cheated the demon in the face, basically. Sucking its essence into it to help us with our attempt to rid this place of the cultists. That's right, we grabbed the torch, which is actually really useful as a miscellaneous item. And a few psychic talents as well. Oh, and a crystal ball, right. Which I'm probably going to use when we make it down to basement level 1 or 2. The final room is always on the second basement level. Which means that it's on the third level below level 1. There is a f another level below that, basement level 3. And you never want to be in that level if you can help it. All it is is long hallways filled with death. That is it. Oh right, we also began grabbing a few more talismans. And we have a few trump cards as well. Alright everyone, well let's get adventuring. We're going to be turning in a few more quests today. I think we've got an old bookshelf here. Which can give us a chance to get a spell. Or, let's rephrase, has a chance to give us a spell. I put it off earlier because I didn't have a high Wands and Pentacles roll. I think we can investigate it now. You see rows and rows of books. Most of the material is quite pedestrian and what you would expect to find in the library of a large estate like this. However, occasionally you come across an item that is more esoteric and you wonder what secrets and knowledge might be hidden here. You'll never know unless you look, of course. You decide to inspect the bookshelf more closely. You scan over the titles and occasionally pull out a volume to get a better look. Well, if we get a swords, we might have a good chance to get a high number here. But we only drew one face card. Alright, there goes our, our wands. We're now winning. We're all in now. Oh, thank goodness. The Queen of Swords. Which we can use our king to take and that will give us enough draws to hopefully earn a spell from this. This looks promising. You think you might have found something. Typhon's Embrace. So we did gain a single spell. Oof, and that was the only thing we picked up. You searched this bookshelf before. Perhaps you didn't know what to look for at that time. Alright, let's see what we grabbed. Typhon's Embrace. This selects up to X revealed trick face trick cards and transforms them into non-face cards of the same suit. Wow, that's ridiculously strong. What type of spell is this? Hyperborean as well. Wow, that is fantastic. I don't think I've seen this spell very often, so this is really, truly amazing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It selects... Yeah, yeah, it selects face cards and transforms them into number cards. Wow. That is very amazing. One of the better spells I think I've seen in this game. Wow. Wow. Oh my god, I've got to definitely try to get Tyson's Embrace all the time from now on whenever it shows up. Alright, let's turn the quest in to the face in the vase. The face swirls around the interior. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's not turning in the quest, we have to free the child. Okay. The face swirls around the interior of the vase, illuminated from within by a ghostly blue energy. The silent scream still echoes in your ears, or perhaps only your imagination. You recognize the vase's construction and the runes etched along its lid. This is a spirit jar, its sole purpose to bottle up and leech energy off of powerful beings. You should proceed with caution. 
Free the child. This is the child that the ethereal woman in the mirror is seeking. You decide to use the release incantation that was taught to you and free the child. We have an excellent draw for this as well. We'll use the page to start. That lets us win the challenge. We'll use the queen on that page. Use the knight on you, and we'll use our queen on the ace, and that will do it for us. The runes etched on the lid glow with power and then fade. You twist off the lid and the creature flows out of the vase. Before you object, it wraps itself around you in an aura. You must return it to its mother. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can make a bargain with this demon now. Bash demon, barber demon, both are really significantly easier for us now that we are much higher level. Something strange is going on here. You sense the opportunity to communicate with the demon and perhaps figure out how it was bound here and for what purpose. Oof. Well, this is really bad. We don't have a good draw. But we're winning anyway because we have two aces, so we should continue to play this game. I can't elect to fail it. We didn't get any face cards in our hand. And we know we can't take any of the revealed cards because... Well, we don't have any faces, so we'll just win. Using the lost sign language of Child Dash to establish contact with the demon. The demon states that it was recently bound here by an acolyte claiming to serve some dark master. It's clear that the demon thought the human insane and dabbling in things that were way over his head. The acolyte somehow managed to find a list of demonic names and binding rituals in some forgotten tome. The demon says that the acolyte would write them on small enchanted slips of paper. He believes his own name to be in the acolyte's pocket. He perished a few short hours ago, wherein he foolishly attempted to summon and bind another demon, but got the slips of paper mixed up. Find the acolyte's body, then bring the name to the demon, and he will reward you. Oh, speaking of rewards, we leveled up. So let's quickly save the game. This will give me an op a way to re reload, basically, if I don't like what happens here. It's always tricky when you level up, because I have totally misclicked once or twice, and then that did it for me. Or rather, not realize I had my cursor selected and got the wrong thing. Let's grab a skill card. And now, what do we want? I want something that can increase our swords. So an Investigator Specialist gives us Swords and Wands, with a heroic feat from each category, so that'll be Offense and Defense. Horror Edges, which we don't need, and a Wands Bone, which we also do not need. We don't need to increase our Wands, not really. I don't need to increase... Well, we could increase our Cups, but I don't think I really need to. We have five. We could instead go for Ranged Weapon Specialist, so we can take advantage of our Cult 45. We'd end up with, like, seven swords, Tim, if you go down this way. Could also just double down on our pentacles. Hmm. I generally like building balanced characters, because I find them being... I find being able to deal with whatever the game throws at us to be very helpful. However, we do have, like, three or four Hyperborean spells. But I also think if we select Hyperborean Sorcery, we are not really going to be able to take advantage of the Hyperborean spells that we would unbuild. So, we would be able to increase our pentacles more, and we get some Hyperborean spell edges. However, I think we've basically drawn almost all the Hyperborean spells we can get. And we don't need the Pentacles of Bone, either. So there's a, quite a bit on the skill card that Craig Holden wouldn't benefit from. No, we'll select Rage Weapon Specialist. They call you Hawkeye down at the Odd Shooting Range. You have won every competition since you knocked Harry Colligan off his throne. What a day that was. We might get lucky and get a Cups upgrade here, but I can't remember what's on the skill sheet. 
in the game files, so that might not be the case. Okay, well, we have another quest now. Oh, the gong! We should totally do that, too. Let's first get to the brain canister. Another story token. Second doubts among the worshippers. Some of the faithful have begun to harbor second doubts about precipitating in this new order. They wonder what their share of the rapture will truly be. All challenges that involve pentacles as the primary suit receive a plus one modifier to the number of cards drawn to the player's hand while this story icon is active. We're also almost at the halfway point. Once I reach this circle, seven in, I must be going down into the basement. We won't be able to wait any longer than that. Now, I think this will give me another companion for the brain canister, if I recall correctly. Let's see what happens. Greetings. I wasn't... Oh, we've already read this. So, let's complete the quest. Have you destroyed its generator? Please tell me yes. You tell the brain canister that the generator has been destroyed. The brain in the canister nearly giggles with joy. You go to fulfill your pledge and remove the power cables, but it interrupts you. Stop. I wish to help you further. One of the tela... Telesra... Wow. Teslarati's sash. On the Telerati's sash is my power unit. Plug it into my canister, and I will have time to help you further if you wish to let me ride along. I may prove useful as I heard it talk a great deal about this place. We gain a brain canister. It gives us plus one card draw and plus one trick for any lore challenge. And at the beginning of any lore challenge, two random tricks are placed in the board in a scryed state. So this is a lot like the heart we picked up. It does, however, cost a point of weight. So we'll have to see what this is trying to take from us. Okay, we were able to fit it into our wands inventory. If we, if it had gone into our cups, I would have had to choose something to discard. In which case, I, w I wouldn't know what to discard. I guess that is the good news if we had indeed taken the, a different... A different skill card. We could have improved our pentacles even more and drawn more sp more spells. However, I can probably drop one of the other spells if I feel up to it. We could also just ditch the crystal ball if I want to grab more spells in my hand. Speaking of which, we could grab a, an Atlantean spell right now. What do we have? Hyborian, 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 Eldritch. So I'll need to decide which of these I want to keep and which one I want to get rid of. Hmm. This is actually tricky, because I actually have been using Lumion Fire every so often. Maybe we won't take a new spell at the moment. Yeah, I don't think I have the inventory space for it. We have three points left. Let's put them into a Talisman Edge. Or maybe not, Tim. Why don't you grab the... If I grab the Boat of Swords, then the world's... I don't benefit from the world's special. Increase your swords another point. Oh, we still haven't found the Bride. Let's go ahead and ring the gong. This will give us a rather long quest. You see a large wood and brass gong. It looks completely out of place standing over by itself in the room. You sense immediately, though, that all is not as it seems here. You've seen enough of these things to notice that the faint aura, a faint aura surrounds it. You have no doubt that the gong is a sorceress puzzle of some sort. The markings are vague, but you would place it around the period of the Three Kingdoms. There is definitely dark magic at work here. The runes covering the wooden frame must contain the instructions on how to use the gong and access its abilities. Decipher the runes and ring the gong. It's clear to you that the runes are instructions for solving the puzzle and activating the gong. You set about figuring out their origin and then attempting a translation. Thankfully, we have a crap ton of cards that let me see things for lore challenges. So I can, with half the cards revealed, this makes this game a lot easier. Well, we're getting... Oh, that was a mistake, flipping that card over. 
Let's play the page. And I don't think I can cast Lumerian Fire, can I? Combat Sorcery Dispel. Yeah, I can't. Okay, well, we won. 15 points over. That's actually really good. I just really wanted to use some of my spells on this challenge. You recognize the runes as a secret language of the enchantments that adorned the Terracotta army of the first Queen Emperor. They detail an invocation. You follow the instructions to the letter. At first you think that nothing has happened. Then suddenly a ghostly aura enshrouds the gong in you. A flash of light blinds you for just a second and you know that a gate has opened and something has come through. And its presence is terrifying. You know from your odd briefings that any time a portal or gate to another dimension is opened up, it, the effects on the sanity of humans can be quite disastrous. You feel a growing sense of fatigue and despair in the presence of this dimensional rift. Alright, we get one point for the Ace of Pentacles and we have three queens in our hand. We have to use the queen there. I'll risk that we can use the queen, that other queen somewhere else, in a better sp spot. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. In fact, you were present when the Cacophony Gate was closed with a Lost Elder sign. This pales in comparison. Directly in front of you, a shimmering Chinese dragon now floats. Its tail coiled around the base of the gong, its glowing eyes fix on you, and you hear it speak directly to your mind. I have come to grant you three challenges if you can first prove your worthiness. So we can actually try to destroy this creature. I've never made the attempt though, because the challenges will give us a quest, and we get a unique edge if we complete it. I don't remember if the edge is worth it or not, It's so much that I don't know how helpful it will be, but we'll do it anyway. You step forward to prove your worthiness. Well, with only one face card, we're probably not gonna succeed at this. You argue your case, but do not quite convince Shen of your worthiness. He does see, still seem persuadable. Try this again. Hello, Eight of Cups. We have a King of Swords, a Page of Cups, and that's it for face cards. I'll risk that our King will come in useful later. You convince Shen of your worthiness to proceed with the three challenges. Good mortal, you have convinced me of your worthiness. You must approach the portal and recite the Oath of Entrance. Once you enter, you cannot leave unless you best all three of the Guardians. Should you fail, you will be destroyed. On the other side, you will face three challenges. The first is a trial by combat. The second is a test of the body. And finally comes the examination of the mind. Three teachers await you, but first you must open the gate to the arena and then step inside. Recite the Oath of Entrance. Remember Shen's warning that once you have entered the portal, you will not be able to return until you have bested all three of the teachers who await you on the other side. However, you believe that you are ready, and you decide to bravely step forward and recite the Oath of Entrance, and then cross through whatever portal opens up. That is a huge amount of wand cards, none of which are a face card. This is not looking good for us. I don't think we're going to be able to get in. Oh, actually, we, we will with that. We can use the page. Oof, we're able to use the King of Swords. That sucks. You recite the oath, and a door of that shimmers like rippling water at sunset opens up before you. You take a deep breath and cross over.
The mist clears and you are greeted by an old man dressed in flowing embroidered Chinese robes. He appears to be a scholar or functionary of some sort, and yet he is armed like a soldier as well. You feel that you should know who he is, but you can't quite recall his name. Greetings, lost one. I am the spirit of Dong Zhao, tyrant, chancellor, and once grand tutor. And now I must school you. Choose the form of your destruction. We can engage him in physical combat, we can use spells against him, or we can engage him in psychic, a psychic duel. Looks like the psychic duel is the, e the far easiest thing for us to do, so we will do that. I think your rewards change, by the way, depending upon how you wish to go through with the challenges. But we'll still fight him psychically. We have a pentacles card of some sort. We'll use the two. I could use Dominate here. Maybe we should use Dominate. Let's flip over two more. Let, uh, let, let's use it. We discard the 10. We earn 5 points. So that actually... Oh, that's a shame. That kind of worked for us. You won the duel. Dong Zhao's essence is scattered all about the, your pocket dimension. You suspect that he'll have no problem reforming. In a flash, everything shifts like you are jumping from one train to a, the next. The mist clears that you are greeted by a young warrior wielding a gigantic Chinese polearm. Greetings, lost one. I am the spirit of Sun Se, soldier, conqueror, and hero. And now I must test you. You only have to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge to survive my blade, and you will advance. You position yourself in a ready stance and raise your hand towards Sunsei. Without a word, you motion with your hand for the test to commence. This is the big traps. Thankfully, our cups is high enough. We've got an okay hand. We have a king, a page, and a knight. Hmm. We'll use the king now. Why not? We'll go. We'll go for the instant instant win. I think that he can give you wounds if you fail his challenge. You evade all the blows in flawless display of speed and agility. Perhaps you are the one. Oh, we're just getting one. To, well, I mean, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be upset at getting three experience points. That's very good. I just wish I was getting more than just a experience points from these challenges. The mist clears that you are greeted by a middle-aged man sitting in a silk, on a silk cushion. He looks up at you with a smile. Congratulations, lost one. I am Kao Kao, the poet. I delight in your arrival, for visitors are few. But you must best me in a duel of poetry. I find that words can cut deeper than any steel. Kao Kao begins his poem. I lift my drink and sing a song. For who knows if life is short or long? Man's life is but the morning dew, past days many, future ones few. Compose and recite your poem. You think on the matter, and then recite your poem. With a lore challenge, we'll get to see exactly how bad we're going to do with our current hand. Hmm, this is not good. At all. We'll immediately use our page to take that. We can take this card. You know, I could win, but I'm going to fail. Your mind races and a sense of frustration grows and grows. You feel like your sanity is slowly slipping away with each failed verse. Oh, God! We lose life in this challenge. How about that? It does, indeed, cut, I suppose, more than any real wound would. Or as, be as good as one. Let's try this again. I want a better hand than what I'm getting. I really do want a better hand than what we're getting. All right, let's lower the damage we're going to take. But my plan will be to fail this challenge as well. Nope, still don't like this. We have three pages here. We can, we can do better than this, game. You can give us more cards. A 
king of cups, a queen of cups, and a page of swords, and queen of pentacles. Okay, this is this is going to work. So we'll, I can see the knight. Let's flip it over and take it with our queen. And now we're winning just like that. Let's see what other cards we can flip. Do I have any, any swords? Oh, I have a page of swords. Let's use it to take the six. We'll use the queen here. And that's all the cards I can take. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, gushes a poet. I have never heard such an elegant observation on roses and their colors. Truly enlightening. <laughs> In a flash, everything shifts like you are jumping from one train to the next. I think that's a... That's the Roses Are Red <laughs> poem. God. So we cover some of the life that we lost and three experience points. You find yourself back in your dimension once again, confronting Shen, the mystical dragon of the enchanted Quin Gong. Well done, mortal. You were the first in many centuries to face the three challenges and return. I hope that you have learned from your journey. You step forward and ask Shen to grant you your reward for besting the three challenges. As you wish. We've earned Hero of the Three Kingdoms. Anytime you would gain health, there was a 5% chance that you will gain that much sanity as well. Okay, so it's that's, a, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. The Lovers. You immediately gain 2 to 12 health points after this card is used to take a trick. So not a very powerful trump, but still, all trump cards are very nice. Alright, we have 11 experience points. Let's grab a Sorcery Edge. And there are some very nice... Things down here too. Let's think here. Whenever spell of any type. Actually, everyone, why don't we go off screen? I'll be right back. I'll show you which one, which one I select. I have been agonizing over this, everyone, for a few minutes, and we're gonna take arcane talent. I should probably instead grab a hyperborean spell. I'm oh, sorry, a talent. But we're gonna grab this. So this will increase our rather. Yeah, this increases our encumbrance for carrying spells, giving me more that I'll be able to cast. Since we can grab an Atlantean spell, and probably another type of spell after that, we'll grab Arcane Talent. So, X is subtracted from the total Encubrance points of any spell cards in your Pentacles inventory for the purposes of determining how many Encubrance points worth of cards you have in your inventory, where X is the level of the edge. I think now I have to... Yes. So it's been reduced down to six, so one of our spells no longer counts. With that in mind, let's grab a spell. Odic Shield is nice. This just draws cards into our inventory. I think this is an Eldritch spell. My, oh no, this right. These, these are all Atlantean. Atlantean. This lets me select X non-face play cards and bump their values up. This adds tricks to the game board. Which I, I tend to really... That's a really nice one, actually. This selects revealed non-face trick cards and lowers their value. And then I draw extra cards into my hand. I kind of wish the game would show me when these cards can be used. Because I think... I don't think they're all combat. I think Voice of Ka might not be. But we'll grab... We'll... Ah, uh, they're... They're nice. Let's grab Tap Essence, which will let me put more tricks on the table. We have two sorcery edges. We also could, could take a talisman edge. Oh, we should grab a talisman edge right away. I forgot all about some of these edges that we can get. We want earth attuned, I'm pretty sure. Nope, nope, we want a mark or something like that. Down at the very bottom of this, there are some very nice... Yes. So... If we had a, a Swords Talisman in our inventory, 
this would give us for plus one swords for everyone we possess. So this would give us plus one swords right now. Because we're a spellcaster, and I think I've got two earth pentacles, I'm sorry, two earth talismans, we'll select pentacle of earth, which will give me plus two pentacles. Yep, pentacles is now nine. Amazing. So we are now extremely powerful when it comes to casting spells. Let's begin working on a ranged edge. Okay, well, we can't interact with her because we haven't found the quest for her yet. I'm thinking maybe we should go back upstairs to work our way to the other side and we can turn in a quest there. What quest have we completed? We can turn... Well, she's on the other side of the mansion, Tim. I guess it's time for the attic. It's time for the attic. Oh, after a class one haunting, though. The haunting manifests itself as a dim ball of light. It has no sense of its previous life or existence. It wanders, hopelessly lost. You should exercise caution. These haunts cannot be reasoned with and can be lethal if disturbed. Oops, hello. We have a wands card in our hand. Hello, queen. can just use the, the ace on you. And we're winning. Awesome. You engage in a psychic duel with the ghost. It turns its mindless anger and desperation against you, but you prevail. You feel that whatever it was before would thank you for the peace you gave it. Okay. Now where, Tim? You just want to begin turning in quests? No, the attic. I wanted the attic. Let's do that. The attic is going to be more dangerous than the second floor is. We are, should be powerful enough to withstand whatever's up here, though. But it will be very close. Many of the things up here I did not mod yet. So our spells won't come in useful against giant spiders, for example. And that's probably giant spiders. The Burning Ghost. From out of nowhere, a ghost appears, bathed in flames, and begins running towards you. Your eyes widen in disbelief as the ghost heads directly at you, all the time seeming to be trying to put out the flames by patting its hands all over its body. Although he makes no sound, you could swear that you can hear him screaming in your mind. A King of Cups and the Page of Pentacles are the two face cards we have. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. The ghost runs straight up to you and flails at you. It either wants to use you to put itself out or spread the flames to you as well. You recognize the ghost as a class 3 full roaming repeater. It probably relives this death run every day at the same time. These types of spirits can be very dangerous. We actually can fight it using our psychic abilities, so we'll try. You won't be able to reason with it due to its agitated state, but you should be able to destroy its manifestation with your psychokinetic talents. We have a king and a knight. We also have one ace, which will give us a point. Hello, seven. We can't beat you. Can't beat a king of pentacles. You use the power of your mind to halt the ghost, and then slowly squeeze it out of this world, and into the spirit world. Three more experience points. Now, what do we want? We could use our pistol twice. I, I think, actually, it's probably in our best effort to take something that reduces the amount of bullets. Hmm. I really think we should. The ammo cost of the first ranged weapon used in any combat challenge is reduced by X, down to zero, 
where X is the level of the edge. Because our current pistol requires, I think, two to three to fire. Oh, I, I can't see, but I'm... Oh, it does. Ammo per use, two to three. So, we we fire it. We, we only have enough for two more uses of it. That will extend it at least to three uses. A locked door. Well, we'll have to pick it. Hello, 10. We can take you with our page. Ah, the attic music. I don't know if, if I've mentioned it, but I'm probably going to upload the Occult Chronicles official soundtrack. It's amazing music. I love using it for Halloween or for creepy games I'm playing, like board games or what have you. Very thematic. So I think I'll upload it this year. I meant to do so last year. Oh. Ooh, this will be the thing in the attic. A particularly dangerous demon to fight. Oh, or he's not in here today. Okay. The game didn't spawn him. Spiders will be in this room. So a pack of ghouls, our first ghoul pack. Wow. You stumble upon three figures hunching over something lying on the floor. They look up to face you. You recoil in horror as you absorb their blood-covered faces. These creatures have been feasting on a body, and it looks human. Ghouls are a random encounter. I have added, I have modded an option to allow you to actually use magic against them, as you normally cannot do so. Your mind is strong. You see things far worse than this. Ghouls. You would know those canine features and that smell anywhere. The odd has been called in more than once to fight ghoul infestations. Calcutta, Chicago, London, Fond du Lac. They seem to pop up everywhere. You remember the briefings. Hit them hard and they will scatter. Don't let them swarm you or get behind you. Make sure you get any wounds, especially bite wounds, treated immediately. Normally, we would only be able to attack the ghouls. That's actually not a bad chance, though. The game's making it harder for us to use magic because of how high our magic stat is. Still, we do get 12 cards and an extra trick, even if the difficulty is 3 higher. We'll do this. They're corporeal creatures. A few well-placed firebolts or shrivel spells should do the trick, assuming you still have a few of those. So we get 12 cards and only... We get 3 face cards. Okay, that's not so bad. And 1 ace to help us. Well, hello. There goes our ace. Can I get rid of a... Oh, we haven't flipped everything over yet. Nice. Okay, we can totally take that 10. And I could maybe increase the 4. No, I can't. I don't have a... How does that one card work? Where are you, Reign of Sulfur? No, I can't use it. I'd have to have a 6 of Pentacles in my hand to increase this... A seven of pentacles in my hand to increase this four to a knight, or to a page to take that card. You step over the twisted remains of their corpses, eager to press on. Where there's one pack, there's usually more. Seven courage, good god. Now that was a random encounter. You can get that in any mission that you're doing. There could be a clue up here. We already have how many clues, though? Five of them? Five clues. Wow. There's only two clues left, I think. Wow, not a lot of encounters up here. Oh, I love the spider drawing there. Or the, or, or the tentacled monster. That looks really nice. Cultist Guardians. A group of cultists emerges from the shadows. They seem to be exceptionally stealthy. They must be scouts or guardians to some organized group that has taken up residence here. This group looks particularly dangerous. They seem well-trained, well-armed, by the look of them, organized. You can't tell exactly how many there are, as they move in a tight formation to hide their numbers. Hmm. This is actually tricky. 
Let's use sorcery. They may look like the cultist version of ninjas, but not even ninjas can easily dodge magical spells. We have two aces in our hand, because I already see two points. We have a good hand as well. Let's... Let's start by using Tap Essence. We take a hit point, but we gather the energy we need. We only get to add one additional trick to the board. Okay. That sucked. Alright, let's go ahead and flip over more cards then. Or start flipping cards over. Hello, Page of Swords. We can take you with the Knight. Hmm, do I want to use the King here? I think I do. Oof, that was a lot of swords. But we slaughter them. You won the battle. The cultists' withered bodies lie strewn across the floor. Maybe you can find something useful on them. Four arcane power is nice. Let's increase that. You. Okay. I think we'll start using our spells a lot more often. We've got... We've got how many of them, Tim? Five spells, all fully powered. Oh, attic room... Attic room with a cage. Well, nothing in these places today. Looks like the attic doesn't have much in it. That might be a spider. A possessed stuffed polar bear. You thought at first that it was some type of decorative statue, but as you get closer, you realize it is a large stuffed animal. Its white fur, black nose, and ferocious claws reveal it to be a polar bear, in fact. Suddenly, the polar bear begins to stir. A ghostly green vapor seems to be animating it. You have seen this type of possession before, and it never ends well. You find yourself fighting a wave of panic that threatens to turn you into jelly. No, it doesn't. Not with a handful of face cards. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. After all, you have read the briefings on what actually happened to the Franklin expedition. This doesn't even raise an eyebrow compared to that. The stuffed polar bear is animated by a spirit of some sort. It doesn't read as evil, but you sense a tremendous rage behind it. It won't care what your intentions are. You are alive, and it isn't. It rears itself up on two feet and awaits your move. It obviously has no intention of fleeing. You sense that it feels cornered here and intends to fight you to the finish. Well, our best option is to dispel it. You decide to channel your sorceress energy into a weapon and hurl it directly at the stuffed polar bear. I'll risk that our king will come in handy later, and it did. With that many tricks on the board, I'm willing to take a risk or two that I normally wouldn't. You won the battle. The body melts into a puddle of furry goo. The head popped right off. Giant spiders. You hear the chittering sound and stop dead in your tracks. You know exactly what that means. Spiders. Big spiders. Before you have a chance to back away, you see them scurry towards you. No matter how prepared you think you are, these things are disturbing any time that they appear. Knowing that you could end up cocooned and sucked dry only makes it worse. You have seen photographs of victims recovered from creatures like these. They are not pretty. Well, we got two aces, and we are not afraid of spiders at all. Your mind is strong. You see things far worse than this. Measuring four or five feet across, these creatures are on the small side from what you have read in the old ca case files. That doesn't mean that you should underestimate them. Many of these giant spiders have fast-acting neurotoxin poisons that can quickly render you helpless. You now notice the extensive web network that covers certain areas of the room. If you get caught up in one of those, you might be in trouble. I did not mod this thing, so I don't really have a, any way of dealing with it other than attacking it, shooting it, or running. 
Running is actually very difficult, so we will attempt to just fight it. It's time for some bug hunting. You remember Rassack, your old drill instructor at the Odd Academy. He always loved the good bug hunting. Actually, why don't we use stopping power? It'll make it a little easier for us. The power behind these slugs will bring most living things to their knees, and even the undead will feel a healthy kick. A single ace? We have a decent hand. Uh, an ace of three of five, like those are the only numbered cards we have. And we can use Shrivel Flesh here too, interesting. Looks like we can use just about everything. Let's use Reckless Charge. Bump down card, bump the card values down on two. Bump the card values down two on two random not yet revealed trick cards and then draw two cards. We picked up a six of pentacles and a four, so not the best cards in the world. I'm not going to use Dominate. I don't think we need that yet. Let's use Tap Essence to put more tricks on the table. Got to add three more tricks. Now what, Tim? Let's start flipping cards. A five. Let's cast... Shrivel Flesh. I can pick six cards, but they have to be of the same suit. And they have to be number uh, non-face cards. Since that's a five, we'll take pentacles. Oh, that sucks. King of Swords. All right, we'll use the th three on you. Well, we're winning now. That's wonderful. I cannot convert the five. I don't think I can, can I? I can draw a card if I use Hyperborean Lightning, though. No, I'm not going to have anything that will help me here. Discarding the 4 or the 5 will just make one of these a 9, which is not enough to take that. So we just should play. We could use a spell to get rid of some of... No, because that's your spell to me you were thinking of. Where is it? Moving fire cannot be used on face cards, so we can't get rid of the King of Pentacles. All right, well, we win. We win by 12 points, which I think is phenomenal. You tear the things apart, and soon there are beg bug... Wow, bug legs and guts everywhere. Let's say bug lugs. Three experience points. Hmm. Let's take another sorcery edge. So now what one do I want? We could make things easier for us with Hyperborean meta magic. We have plenty of Hyperborean spells. So this one gives us more tricks on the table. This one gives us more cards in our hand. This one lowers the difficulty of the challenge. This would let me actually increase the values of... I can target face cards that have a boring lore. Let's select this. That might let me discard number cards to increase my face cards up a point. We'll, we'll give it a try. Let's go ahead next and grab, a, I suppose, our last sorcery edge, or do I want a feat? Let's, let's grab another heroic feat.
Your attention is drawn to an area of thick spider webs that cover the walls and ceiling. It strikes you as odd how strong the strands look. A sudden chill shoots down your spine and you realize there is a human-like form cocooned within the web. That's when you hear the movement. And he that's when you see the movement and hear the distinctive chittering of the giant spiders. Alright, we have another spider encounter. Oh, but however, seeing what's what happens to you is enough to make Craig Holden be afraid. Your mind is weak. You struggle to maintain your sanity. All right, as before, we don't have too many options. We'll use stopping power again. We have a single queen. I can't use the blade dances. I don't have a melee weapon. Let's let's use reckless charge. No, we should put cards on the table first. So we'll use tap essence. We take a hit point of damage. We put four more tricks on the table. Next. I don't have many spells, so most of my Hyperborean spells won't come in useful. We win, just like that. Hmm, I could convert that into a page and take that for four points. But I'd like to convert the wands and what have you instead. Ugh, this is Queen of Pentacles. Well, it looks like I should have done that after all. I could get rid of the Page and Queen and hope for other cards. Let's see how that works. So where's my Typhon's Embrace? It's like only one card. Let's change the queen. Nice! Hey, that gave us two more points. Alright then, let's win. You almost feel bad for these things, but then you remember the body in the web. The body cocooned in the web has been dead for some time and most likely sucked dry. You can't determine whether it was a man or a woman. You decide to cut away some of the web that encapsulates the body and see if you can identify it or find anything that might help you. We get only one shot at this, and that is it. So we need to get higher than an eight. You can get some decent things from it, but it looks like we're not going to win. Oh, we do. Just barely, though. That's a shame. We cut away some of the web fibers, but they come off reluctantly. After a little effort, you can determine that the body was that of an adult male. He was dressed in some type of suit. Suddenly, a pocket of air opens up, and some objects fall out. They might be of help. Nope. That's it. Bug juice! You heard the steps following you about ten minutes ago. Whatever it was, it thought that it was being clever. The strange giggling that you heard was a dead giveaway that something was up. You quickly turn to confront it and are surprised to find it just in the act of tapping your shoulder. The creature is truly bizarre and almost comical, but horrifying all the same. That is actually creepy. That is a much creepier version of Beetlejuice. You seem to have frightened it as much as it has surprised you, if that is any consolation. Your mind is strong. The comical appearance of this creature makes it truly hard to be afraid. The creature seems to be to have an almost corporeal body, but if but it's still a ghost. You can feel its psychic kinetic energy radiating out from its ectoplasmic core. Without any need for a medium's trance, the ghost communicates with you. You are stunned as such a vocalization is almost unheard of. Welcome to the neighborhood. Name's Bug Juice. You want to play a game? Bugjus will simply not stop talking, and he keeps tapping you on the shoulder whenever you turn to go. You want to play a game, huh? It starts to drive you crazy. Oh, you can't even flee it. You have to play the game or dispel him. You have no idea what game what the game is, but the ghost keeps giggling about it. You decide to nail things down a bit. Bugjus agrees to go away if you win and give you his most prized possession. But if you lose, you have to give up something you own and go on a little trip. 
You wonder what that means. We have a King of Cups, a Queen of Swords, and those are our only face cards. We have an Ace of Pentacles. And we can we reveal the Knight immediately to win the challenge. It's been a long time since I've seen Bug Juice, and I don't remember what happens if you lose his challenge. I don't think he gives you anything special, though. I think it's just random loot. You win the game. It's a stupid, silly game. The only joy you have is that you cheated, and the annoying ghost doesn't even realize it. You wish it bon voyage. An axe! Holy crap! Wonderful! Now we can use our one heroic feat. So this lets us select a card in our hand, and then increase its value by plus X. Whirlwind could be useful. We bump up the values for all our non-face cards in our hand. Whirlwind Bone, select a revealed non-face trick card, bump its card value down, minus X, and then add X points to your trick-taking score, then draw a card. Critical hit is nice. Select the non-played face card, bump its card value, plus X, then bump the card value down on a random one, plus X, then draw a card. So this increases over... This increases a card, a non-face card in our, in our hand by a random number, and then bump the card's value down on a random non-face trick card not yet revealed. So we have to use this to begin the challenge. We then draw a card. I think critical hit is probably nicer, because we get to add points directly to our trick point taking score. Or whirlwind could be nice. Let's grab Whirlwind. We have an axe now, so that will come in handy. And I think we'll grab... I think we'll grab another ranged edge. Actually, we need a Bone of Swords now, or I can't use the axe. Let's just take the Bone of Swords rather than use the world for it. Sure about that, Tim? Yeah, we'll just do that. The world won't give us any... Well... No, hold on to it. You could use the world. Let's increase our swords again. We found a clue. Minus two target level. You have indications that cultists of some type are active in the mansion. Yes, I would have guessed that from everything else we have. So minus six of the target level, plus two tricks, plus two draw. There is only one clue token left, and that will be downstairs in the cellar and or basement levels. Okay, we're back on this side of the man. Oh, we're on the second floor actually, Tim. Let's turn in one request and then we'll call this session, everyone. Hope you guys like this one. We are now looking fantastic. Our stats are really high. Our health and sanity are really high. We have a nice arrangement of Oh, hello, of spells and feats. So this is something as well that happens. Um, we've got an extra cups item, basically. The weight of the cups, we have six, but we're only allowed to have five. This is because the game can't refuse to give you something when you take it via your skill cards. But if we were to find a new cups item, we'd have to discard two things to take it. Okay, we don't want to fight the... This is probably for the Vashaka. We're here. We might as well grab it. Reanimated skeleton. It seems impossible, but a human skeleton steps in front of you from out of the gloom. It hisses at you, and you smell the breath of death. Some dark necromancy must animate this long-dead creature. You can't even understand how the bones can be held together. It is terrifying. This is a random encounter. You can always get one of these in whatever quest you're doing. I have added a magical means of dealing with it. Your mind is strong. You see things far worse than this. You were part of the team that took down the Black Circle of Necromancers a few years back. You've encountered your fair share of reanimations over the years. 
You wonder if a curse or a necromancer of some skill has summoned a spirit to animate this bag of bones. Was it sent after you? Remember your briefings that it is... You remember from your briefings that it is decayed, that its decayed appearance can be deceptive and prepare yourself. You will need to either fight or flee. Normally, we could only attack the skeleton. I have added this way of dealing with it. And our... Well, this is... We have a better chance. Let's do it. We drew 14 cards. We have... Wow, we actually have four face cards and three of them are kings. We do have to hope that we get the right cards, though. Let's use a king. We're gonna annihilate this poor skeleton. We get a free spell casting. Let's use... Where's the free cups? Usual flesh. You narrowly avoid a slash as you finish your incantation. It never has a chance to take a second as the spine snaps and it crumples to the ground. The bones turn to dust before your eyes. That was wonderful. Wow, we are looking really good. Let's think here. Let's take Pistol F Expert. X is subtracted from the target level at the start of any combat challenge if you have a pistol weapon card in your inventory, where X is the level of the edge. Make it slightly easier for us to win when we use our gun in combat. You think this might be the stash of papers that the Rashasha sent you after. You should be careful in case the ward can harm you. Well, we see a two of pentacles. We have a crap ton of wand fa We have all the wand face cards, all four of them. That's actually really rare. Let's take that. You sense the ward, and since it is not directly attuned to you, you are able to defeat it temporarily. You quickly gather up the manuscript pages and put them in your pockets. We'll be back there, so I don't need to go downstairs at the moment. We want to turn in this quest to the figure in the mirror. She is... Oh, she requires me going a different direction, Tim. Is there any reason for you to continue down this path in this direction? Only the plant creature. I don't particularly care about the plant creature. Let's go turn this quest in. And then we'll call the session. In fact, I think we're going to be done. I didn't find this gentleman. Oh, we do have the Acolyte's body. Darn it, Tim. That was in the direction you were heading in, I think, wasn't it? That is it. All the way over there. I don't think I have time to do both, everyone. In fact, I know I don't. Let's return the child. I think that's important to do. Thematically, at least. Horror of the zombies. Oh, crap! I actually thought we did zombies already, but I'm resisting a horror check, so we, we must not have uh, done this before. Okay. Crap, your mind is strong. You see things far worse than this. You finally remember your last mission with Officer Rick. It was utter zombicide. So I, this is another random encounter. You are only able to attack it normally. I have added a way for you to magically deal with the with these things. You begin... Uh, we should read this. This place certainly knows how to keep you on your toes. Just don't build a summer house here. You begin to invoke Wither, which should hopefully reduce these creatures to dust. 
We drew 14 cards. And I have... Oh, I have a good amount of face cards. Hmm. But the first card we, we, we reveal is a King of Cups, which doesn't help me whatsoever. We'll risk using being able to use our King a little later. That was lucky, but it paid off. We could draw more cards, but we're already winning with the max amount of points that, that will give us 7 draw. So let's go ahead and just win. It was tricky, but you managed to get all three within the confines of the spell. It helps that they were the slow type of zombies rather than the fast type. Now what? Okay, this is amazing. We are doing really, really well. Hmm. Let's take Hyborian Music of the Spheres. If you have two more spells of the Hyperborean subtype in your inventory, and they are eligible for use in a challenge, X additional cards are drawn to the start of the challenge, where X is the level of the edge. The, these cult, the cultists spent years recruiting and training guardians to ensure that this unholy ceremony is not interrupted. Actually, we're going the wrong way, Tim. You need to go back up the correct way. You went in the wrong direction. Way to go. Way to waste a lot of time. We're going to stop here, everybody. We'll read the story token when we get back in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.